The Florida Everglades is unlike anywhere else on Earth. In the summertime, if you can manage to dodge the recurring afternoon thunderstorms, it can offer any angler a place of mystery and non-stop exploration. There's times I find myself looking on Google Earth or running my boat and just thinking about the fact that the Everglades is so vast, there's so many places to fish, it can almost be overwhelming planning your day. In the summer, fish often move out from the warmer backwaters to the sandy beach coastlines in large numbers, readily accessible for many fishermen. Due to hurricanes and storms, these coastlines are always changing, often resembling a beaten down jungle rather than your standard backwater mangrove line. Today, we head out for a quick afternoon fishing trip, hoping to show you guys what this national park has to offer. Okay guys, well to start off, we are gonna be throwing no other than the gulp shrimp. This is on a 1 8 ounce Z-Man jig head. Natural shrimp color, kind of some white and some gray. Um, it matches this bottom really, really well. For, if you guys don't know, or if you don't fish the Everglades, it's something I learned very quick. A lot of these areas that are the coastline, I mean, you have tide swings that are three or four feet, and on low tide, it is 40 yards of beach, and then on high tide, all these fish just push up on these, it's just sand and some oysters, they push up on it. And I mean, these mangroves are like underwater. It's just a very unique fishery. But like I said, it's sandy, so I'm gonna be throwing this color. I think it matches it good. And hopefully, I mean, it's it's high tide, highest tide I've ever seen this spot right now. So I'm assuming we're gonna be able to get on them. And hopefully there's a bunch of fish pushed up here. It is four o'clock on the dot. So we are gonna be fishing. We have about four or five hours or so but it should get better as the time goes on. So bear with me if it, if it starts off kind of iffy. That being said, let's get on and let's get to it. Alrighty guys, well, we are back to it. I'm super excited. Uh, probably the most excited I've been for a trip. I haven't been to the Everglades and it's been too long. I don't take advantage of it as enough like I should. Anyways, we are here now. It's been probably a month and a half since my last video in the Everglades. Um, a lot of times it's hard to find someone to fish with. I don't love coming down here by myself just in case I mean, no service, we're 40 miles from Chukaluski, not 40. We're 30 miles south of Chukaluski. It's just, can be a little sketchy if something were to happen. You know, some crazy things happen while you're fishing, you know what I mean? That being said, we're gonna work up in all these, all these little lines. I've fished this before, caught in some good stuff. So we're gonna see what happens, but stay tuned. Um, I'm excited, super excited. We're gonna get on them. One thing I will say is we have to keep an eye on these storms. It is very, very stormy as is every single day in summer, but we should be able to get on them. Should have plenty of time to fish. And if it rains, I'm fine with that. We're inshore, not much can happen, you know what I mean? So throwing 30 pound leader, 15 pound braid. Another thing too, is I do have a tarpon set up with a um, bait buster because sometimes you'll be up here and you'll see something spook and there's there's big tarpon that, laid, that lay up in this little cove in this bay right here. Um, and they just, they'll be laid up on the sand. All right, first cast of the day, let's go. It's bouncing the gulp off the bottom. I don't know what it is. I think it's a catfish or a jack. Yep. It's crazy, I'm having mosquitoes landing on me in midday. You do not want to get stuck in the Everglades at night. Oh my goodness. Jeez, this is the ladyfish honey hole. Dude, these ladyfish are everywhere. Found a new ladyfish spot. You can see up there, literally, I mean, this water goes up in these mangroves 50 yards. It's just crazy. That's why it's kind of tough because I feel like a lot of these snook, they probably just, if they're smart, I mean, they're on this high tide, they're probably just pushing way back in there, eating crabs, bait fish, everything that pushes back in the mangroves for protection, you know what I mean? 
Because like I said, when this tide moves, this will be just beach or inches of water. Look at that. That is a small trout, man. But first species of the day we're actually after. Look at the size of him. Beautiful little trout, super white. That was a pretty trout, so small. Already gone through two gulps. These ladyfish are thick in here, man. You can see this outgoing tide has shifted. Guys, this water dumps out from back here. I don't even know where it goes. We're about to find out. Come on, there's gotta be a snook back in there, right? I don't know if you guys can see those, but there is a couple beautiful Rosetta spoonbills back in the, the mangroves right there. And that's kind of what, what you see coming to the Everglades. That's kind of a staple of the Florida Everglades. But those are just beautiful birds right there. There's three of them. Bunch of pilchards. Look at that thing. That is going to get killed by a tarpon. A little blue crab just swimming around. Look at that chew fish. That is not something you see every day. I hope you guys saw that. There was just probably a 70 to 80 pound jewfish. I hope the GoPro caught him up in the mangroves right there. You see him, he's spooked out there. I was gonna get the camera, swing around to get the camera and try to show you guys. Wow, that is cool. Seeing one that big up in the mangroves like that was pretty sick, man. That's like something you only see in the Everglades, really. I mean, this is crazy. Decent snook, decent snook, I think. Yep, good snook. Good snook, guys. Got him. Beautiful snook, guys. That is a beautiful Everglades snook right there, guys. Woo! We're on the board. He might be close to slot. Right after I was just talking about that jewfish. Beautiful snook right there. He's got beautiful colors on him. Guys, there we go. Look at that snook, man. 28 inch snook on the dot. Beautiful snook. He's a fat one. Look at that. He came up, he smoked it. But we're gonna get him back in the water. There we go, kicked off. Guys, let's go. Hey, that's within the first hour of fishing out here in the Everglades, 28 inch slot snook. I mean, anytime you get a slot snook on artificial like that, cannot complain. Look at that, chewed the gulp shrimp. I need to put a new one on. Guys, trying to land those fish by yourself is not fun. I was pointing out, I saw like a hundred, almost hundred pound Goliath grouper on top of the water, fins out of the water in the mangroves. Really cool sight to see. And then I was pointing that out and then I got hit hard and I wasn't even prepared, not going to lie. And then before you know it, I see him jump. I'm like, uh oh, it's a good snook. And if you wondered why I kind of tossed him in the water, guys, out here in the Everglades, there's so, I mean, I was listening to a podcast today. They were talking about how bad the shark problems are. You do not, especially out here by yourself, you do not want to get your fingers chomped off. So I basically just take them out of the water, get a video or whatever, put them back in the water as quick as I can. And that's about the best you can do. I have a net. Sometimes I'll leave them in the net too. It's super hard if, when you're by yourself, but he kicked off real strong. If it's like a fish I know fought hard and stuff, sometimes I'll take them up to the mangroves just so I can maybe put them in the water a little bit, whatever. But yeah, you do not want to mess around. Anyways, awesome first fish really, first good fish. 
I'm gonna throw on another gulp and just keep working. He was far off the mangroves. He was not that close to the mangroves. But let's go. He hit that thing hard, man. It was like setting setting the hook into a freaking rock. Ooh, that was a big hit. That was a big fish, I think. Guys, I just got doinked in there. That's a good start to the day. I mean, it's already five o'clock. It's like, I got out here late. I had class in the morning and it's like, I was like, screw it. Might as well come down here, you know what I mean? And that makes it worth it just right there. Everglades snook, you can tell how white, like how that snook's been living out here. I'll point it out, but when we get back there in the backwaters, you'll notice they'll start to get super dark compared to that. That one had no yellow in them. He was all white. All right, on to the next cove. Yeah, we're just working this line. There's a big like kind of bay on the coast. And then there's just a bunch of little coves, little indents, if you will. And we're just tucking in them a lot. Some of them have water dumping out, but honestly, I'm starting to think that the ones that don't have as much water pouring out are a little better. Cause that one was the first one that didn't really have a whole lot of water pouring out. And we kind of smoked it. It's got a nice big snook, so. Yeah, it's another decent little snook. Not bad at all. Ooh, there we go, guys. Second decent little snook. Obviously nowhere near, oh. All right, guys, obviously nowhere near as big as the last one, but pretty snook. He's fat, man, you can tell. I mean, I'm looking at schools of pilchards. These things just eat all day. I got it right there. Just casting it in all these little pockets. Alrighty guys, well, another snook down. It is 5.30. So I've been fishing for a little over an hour. He frayed me up really good. I should probably retie real quick. Don't want to mess around with that. Especially here, you never know what you'll hook. Alright guys, so we just got a couple more little coves here. And then we're going to motor a little bit further towards where we're gonna shoot back up into the uh, backwaters. Going up one of the main rivers down here. Yeah, we're gonna be heading up one of the main rivers. So I'm basically just gonna work this and then motor kind of towards the mouth. Probably gonna fish the mouth of the river a little bit and then work back in there. But hopefully these storms clear up a little bit. I do not really wanna mess around with those. It looks like, I mean, out there is beautiful, but kind of inland a little bit is a little rough. Hopefully they stay at bay. All righty guys, next spot. Gonna go towards the river mouth, get on some fish, and then work back in the backwaters. Alrighty guys, new spot. We're just, this is literally the coast coastline, not having tucked back in anywhere. Got a little bit clearer water, still obviously Everglades clear, so it's tannic, very, uh, still murky, but basically we just got a mangrove line. Never fished this before. A lot of these mangrove lines though have some oysters, um, like a lot of sticks, logs. I could see some snook cruising around here. We're going to see how it is. I think it works around this corner and it's outgoing tide. I'm hoping there's some stuff coming out, but we'll see. It looks really clear up here. Looks like a pretty spot. It's also really shallow. Got a little deeper. We're gonna, this is gonna be a quick stop. We're gonna work back in here pretty quickly and then we'll be out of here. But I am intrigued by this uh, big oyster bar right here. snook yeah honestly i would not be surprised if those were some big snook laid up they spooked right off that oyster bar right where it gets a little bit deeper that oyster bar comes up to like a couple inches and then gets deeper i didn't even think about casting that that's kind of a rookie mistake but it's good to know because there's other oyster bars i can see so now i'm gonna go cast along the edge of them maybe get lucky we'll see but 
I am excited. That, that kind of gets me excited. Whew. Big shark. It's getting pretty shallow. I don't want to get stuck. Little catfish. Yeah, you're gonna get your fair share of these in the Everglades, that's for sure. I've already gotten two of them. Oh, I see a fish up there, gotta get this off real quick. I see a fish. I don't know what it was, redfish or snook probably. I'm just gonna launch it as far as I can on this little flat. It gets super shallow up there. Let's see if there's anything up there. I just saw probably a low 20s snook or red. Jeez. Oh, snug. My line's so tangled. All right, well, we're gonna get out of here. I don't wanna get stuck. Getting stuck at six o'clock in the Everglades is not a good plan. Along the coast of the Everglades, there is numerous rivers that run from the backwaters all the way to the Gulf. Like most other fishermen, we decided to run up the river mouth and start making the long run back to the ramp, stopping along the way, throwing topwaters at some spots I thought we might be able to get on some fish. Okay guys, next spot, I'll explain in a little bit, but skitter walk, three inch, gonna get the job done. Favorite time of day, as I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, but kind of forgot, it's been, like I said, it's been a minute. Kind of forgot how, so, how far south I was. Really, I mean, it took 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes to kind of get back here, so it is already 7, 15, so we got about an hour left of fishing. Dude, this silence is deafening. It's crazy how quiet it is, but tide's pouring out, it's kind of like that spot we spooked him at earlier. I got an oyster bar right here. I've never fished it before, but I've marked it because I've passed it before and we've spooked stuff on it. And basically it's an oyster bar in the middle of a bay that has current dumping. So there's gonna be fish here, but there's also another one up there. It gets super shallow right here. <laughs> there's another wind knot, that's unreal. Good sign, something just blew up in there. All right, we just got a little island right here. We're gonna throw a couple at this and then dip because it is 7.30. I wanna hit another spot or two. I just wanna get one more good fish. One more big snook, something. All right, let's go. Next spot. Go No, I had one hand on the trolling motor. No, I think it was a little snook. <laughs> Look at, how do these things survive? Look at them. Blue crab right there. Just on top of the water. Alrighty, last spot, let's go. Sick that tarpon. If I had a swim bait, I would have thrown it, but all I have is a gulp. There's the gator. There's always one back here. I see a rainbow. Uh. 
Alrighty guys, well, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Well, pretty awesome little evening. Um, got out, you know, anytime you can get a 28 inch slot snook in the Everglades, it's always a great day. Um, got kind of lucky on that one, I think. Uh, that Jew fish was awesome, that thing was really cool. That's something that you don't see every day. Got a couple little snook. I found a new ladyfish spot if I ever need ladyfish. Um, but yeah, just a quick little video for you guys. Um, this is gonna be kind of my introduction back into the Everglades. Uh, it's been probably a month, maybe two months since my last Everglades video, but I love fishing down here. It is an awesome, awesome uh, time. And it's just kind of the, the thing about it is just so, so crazy because it's just like, you know you're just running past great spot after great spot, but it's like the only way you can ever learn is by coming out here a bunch like I did today, even just for quick little trips. So I'm gonna be taking advantage of that and I'm gonna be uh, trying to get on some fish here uh, and I'm excited. But with that being said, back with another video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Something quick, something awesome. And if you guys did, if you guys wanna see some more Everglades stuff, comment down below, let me know. And I will continue to crank out these videos. Gonna be doing two a week, uh, hopefully catching some awesome fish for you guys, making some awesome content. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out from the Florida Everglades. See you guys in the next video. Another thing too, looking back, watching this footage, is just realizing how blessed I am to be able to grow up and be able to fish places like this. I mean, look at this sunset, leaving Everglades National Park with these views. You just cannot get much better. Um, I appreciate you guys. If you enjoyed this video, like it, hit subscribe, and God bless, and peace out.